Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has recently announced the members who will be making up the new Liberal cabinet. One member is the MP for Brampton West, Kamal Kara. Kamal has been appointed as Minister of Seniors. She graduated from York University and is a registered nurse. Before becoming a politician, she worked at St. Joseph Health Centre in Toronto. Joining me today to discuss her new appointment is MP Kamal Kara. Thank you for joining me today, Minister Kara. Thank you so much, Julia. It's great to be here and looking forward to chatting with you. Over the past summer, you had been busy campaigning for the federal election. Since then, have things slowed down for you or are they still going as fast paced as during the campaign? Well, as you know, I'm just, this was my third campaign um, and things were certainly very fast. And as you know, you know, it was a, a certainly very different campaign as we've seen in the past few campaigns. Uh, but no, it's uh, just as busy now. I'm so excited to be in this new role first. Very excited to be a re-elected member of parliament from Brampton West and uh, it's such an honor to have the trust of uh, people in my community of Brampton West for this honor for the third time now and of course it's such an honor and a privilege uh, to be appointed as a new minister of seniors for, for Canada and it's a, a responsibility that I take very uh, seriously and uh, responsibly and very excited um, to you know, uh, work on, on uh, and advocate for things that matter to seniors across Canada. What was your reaction to finding out that you would be the next cabinet minister for this role? Well, I think this is something that uh, you never really prepare for. It's a very humbling experience and I always just, you know, want to thank the Prime Minister for uh, placing his trust in me as a new minister of seniors. Um, you know, this is a responsibility that I, I take very seriously and something that I'm very excited, um, you know, for the past now month, uh, got the thing started already um, and sort of the work already in advancing uh, priorities for seniors. As you know, we had an ambitious uh, platform for seniors uh, in our election platform. So I'm looking forward uh, to talking to seniors across Canada, talking to stakeholders across Canada, uh, and of course, working with provinces and territories uh, to really move the dial and, and, and uh, you know, work on uh, advancing those priorities that, uh, the, that Canadians have elected us to do, frankly. Now, prior to going into politics, you were a registered nurse. Do you think that your experience as a registered nurse will help you in your new role as Minister of Seniors? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an honor to be, uh, again, as I said, a member of parliament uh, and now a new minister of seniors and before that to be a registered nurse. And uh, we've certainly seen, as you know, uh, during this pandemic, the role that our healthcare professionals uh, pray, play across Canada, especially during this pandemic and, and the work and that they've been able to do to keep us all safe. Uh, and I think there are many similarities and uh, certainly I think uh, being a, a registered nurse, as you know, uh, as you may know, that during the height of the first wave, I would, went back to the front lines uh, to support my community in Brampton West at the long-term care facility. That was one of the hardest hit communities uh, in, in Brampton and Ontario where Canadian Armed Forces was also uh, called upon to be able to see firsthand the challenges that our seniors have gone through uh, across Canada, frankly, and uh, you know that's an experience uh, that I I know will serve me extremely well uh, in this new role, uh, and that's something that I think I often think very much about of the role uh, that I play in advocating to, for those very vulnerable seniors across Canada. Now you're obviously very passionate about your role. So what inspired you to get into politics? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, as you may know, I was actually one of the youngest members of parliament to be elected in Liberal caucus back in 2015. Uh, I was inspired, as was um, I was always involved in uh, uh, community initiatives, and as a nurse, I was always uh, very keen on health issues that affect all of us every single day. Um, and I was inspired by the leadership of uh, our, our prime minister and leader at the time in 2014. Uh, who had this vision for Canada to ensure that uh, we can move forward in a way, in an inclusive way, um, and really 
um, work towards ensuring that our middle class and those working hard to join and have the opportunities that they need. Uh, been inspired by that leadership and something that we've been able to do for the past six years to work extremely hard for my community uh, of Brampton, which, uh, you know, previous to us getting elected, did not get the funding and did not get the attention that it needed in the past. So I'm really extremely happy that we've been able to deliver on things that matter to Bramptonians, that matter to Canadians, uh, and look forward to, uh, as you know, with the, the 44th Parliament getting right to work uh, to ensuring that we continue to advance on priorities that matter to Canadians every single day and frankly what they have elected us to do. What was the road to politics like for you? Well, it's been uh, it's been very, you know, from a registered nurse to now a minister of seniors, it's been a, a road that and experiences that uh, have that really shaped me uh, into who I am. As you know, I'm a registered nurse by profession. I worked in an oncology department uh, at, at a hospital in Toronto before I got into politics. Um, had the opportunity to again serve my community, uh, you know, for last six years. Um, had the opportunity to serve under different uh, ministers uh, as parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Health, as parliamentary secretary to the Minister of National Revenue and International Development, uh, and uh, now as a new Minister of Seniors. And this has uh, uh, been a very, um, uh, you know, it's a very crucial time to for you know Canadians, but particularly seniors. And I, this is something that I take very seriously and I look forward to getting right to work as we get our mandate letters uh, and of course um, uh, you know putting in uh, you know the, the platform commitments that we have put forward. Now over the pandemic we saw the dark side of senior care in long-term care homes. I know that you were working at a hospital but what kinds of changes do you hope to implement to improve the care of seniors in this country? Absolutely I think uh, this pandemic certainly has shown a light um, into the realities, the tragic realities uh, of long-term care facilities across Canada. Uh, strategy, you know, these situations actually existed long before the pandemic, but has certainly shown that uh, particular uh, light into what uh, some of the most vulnerable seniors have gone through. And, you know, with my, and I actually had the opportunity to, to see that firsthand in my own community in Brampton, where um, it was one of the hardest hit communities um, by this pandemic uh, where Canadian Armed Forces members were called upon and I was able to volunteer with the Canadian Armed Forces member and see the the realities that existed and, 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 to, and to advocate for things that matter. So this is something that I think I'm going to take with me uh, and ensure that, uh, as you know, long-term care um, uh, facilities, is a, you know, it's, it's a provincial jurisdiction. Uh, but we certainly have a responsibility to work with our provincial and territorial partners. Uh, you know, we've given significant amount of funding to billions of dollars to provinces and territories. We have committed a significant amount in our platform, and I look forward to working with the Minister of Health. Uh, but of course, with our provinces and territories, because they really are uh, the people that deliver that care uh, and to support them in ways to ensure that seniors across Canada um, have the support that they need and they have, uh, uh, you know, rules and regulations that are enforced to ensure that they are safe uh, in the places that they stay. Outside of your role as Minister of Seniors, what are some of the issues that are important to you personally? Well, I think um, a lot of things, uh, I think within, within the last 19 months, I think my first priority, and I think it's a priority for our government, is to finish this fight against COVID-19. Uh, we know that um, unless we get everyone vaccinated, unless we continue to follow public health guidelines, unless we ensure that our communities are safe, and you know, with the new uh, virus coming, uh, the reports of the new virus that's um, uh, that is around that, that we've heard about, I think it's really important that we don't take that lightly. Uh, and a lot of people, I think, um, it's a, sometimes it's easier to get carried away and think and be a little bit more complacent, complacent and thinking that the, the pandemic is over. It certainly is not. Uh, and I think one of the first priorities is uh, to ensure that we have better health outcomes, to ensure that we have better economic outcomes, is to ensure that we finish this fight against COVID-19. And as a healthcare professional who uh, worked at the front lines of this pandemic, uh, whether it was at the long-term care or vaccinating Canadians, uh, you know, in my community uh, before the election, I can tell you uh, this is something that we can't take lightly. And uh, as a proud proud to be part of a government uh, that has mandated vaccinations, that has ensured that we're working towards, uh, have 
given provinces and territories the support that they need that we so that we can protect Canadians and that is the biggest priority for me and of course uh, as a registered nurse uh, everything related to healthcare uh, and ensuring that um, healthcare workers are protected and where the places and uh, and places that they work those that they have uh, they're they're able to work uh, uh, they're able to work so that you know regardless of uh, the intimidation and other things that they come to. So we certainly passed, uh, you know, have introduced legislation to do just that in the Kumbhala Court. So I am going to continue to working hard for seniors, for Canadians across Canada to ensure that they're protected uh, and that we can move forward in a meaningful way uh, so that we have opportunities for every single Canadian. This year's cabinet has included many intelligent and capable women, including yourself. Do you think that the new era of government politics in Canada will continue to see strong women in power? Absolutely, I think. I think we've come a long way um, and representation matters and when you add women, you do change politics and I'm extremely proud to be part of a Liberal government that uh, in 2015 when Prime Minister uh, Justin Trudeau announced the first ever gender balance cabinet to, you know, from then to now, we ensure that that is at the table to ensure that we put in lenses such as the gender-based analysis to our budgets, to everything that we do as a government, whether it is foreign policy or domestic policy, uh, it has made an impact. And, you know, from having uh, now uh, over 100 women uh, elected in the House of Commons to having the first ever minister, female minister of finance, and, uh, you know, it is, we've come a long way. Uh, but I think uh, certainly a long way to go as well. But, uh, you know, we cannot ever underestimate the power of mentorship and representation. That's something I'm very proud of and is something that I take very seriously in ensuring that we create those spaces and opportunities for young women and girls across Canada uh, to have that space so that they can own that space uh, because it matters. And we have seen that in policies that get put into uh, our, our, our agenda and as you know you know we're gonna uh, on uh, our agenda on ten dollars ten dollar a day child care that is something that we're committed to we've already signed agreements with many provinces and territories and I hope uh, provinces like Ontario certainly comes back comes to the table to ensure that here in Ontario all, as well that we can get ten dollar a day child care speaking of inspiring women what advice would you give to young girls particularly young girls of color in pursuing politics in their careers or more in general well, to the young girls, especially young girls of color, and, uh, you know, I sort of look back to myself when I was one of the youngest uh, members of parliament, uh, and, you know, to be a young woman, an immigrant woman of, of color, I had as many layers of, uh, you know, challenges, and, uh, but I can tell you, uh, to them, to those girls that are listening, uh, you belong. You belong to these tables. You belong... Uh, and never ever think that there's not a space for you. You have to make sure you create that space. And uh, it's important for women like myself and others to own these spaces, but it's just as important uh, to bring more people along. And I take that very seriously, and not just uh, as a member of parliament. Uh, mentorship and uh, you know representation matters, and that's why I ensure that even behind the scenes, whether it is in my political office or whether it is in my ministry office that we make gender priority we make those spaces for uh young people we make those spaces for racialized canadians to ensure that their voices and their perspectives are at the table uh and i'm going to continue to do that work uh so that we have more inclusive voices because they make better choices and they have better outcomes for the entire country thank you for joining me today minister kamal Thank you so much, Julia. It was great having and chatting with you. Take care. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. This is Julia Cosby, and you're watching the International News Channel. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to keep up to date on all of our latest content.